Number one. I had just moved out of a share house in the suburbs and into my own shitty one-bedroom apartment in the city. I'm a male, and at the time I was around 25 years old. My apartment, while old and small, was located about 500 meters from one of the most popular night spots in the inner city. As I was in my mid-twenties and out on my own, this was the perfect place for me. This was because my friends and I were quite social, and would frequent bars and nightclubs in the city, and the taxi fares were starting to add up. Also, this new apartment was close to my work, so it made sense. I got settled in right away and invited my friends over for pre-drinks before hitting the clubs. Due to the limited space in the apartment, this meant that some friends were inside and some were drinking on the walkway just out front. We had the music up and had just started drinking between songs. I could hear the couple next door arguing. Now, the apartment was old and shitty, which meant thin walls too, so I pressed an ear to the wall in order to listen in. I hadn't met any of my new neighbours at this time, as I didn't take long to move in, and I didn't really see anyone during the time that I was moving in. I was curious. Judging from what I could determine while eavesdropping, they were a gay couple in their early thirties. One of the men was yelling at the other to go next door and tell us to keep it down. The other was arguing that it was just a house warming and to let it go for the night. Since I didn't want to cause trouble, I marshaled everyone outside to start making our way to the nightclubs, leaving my new neighbours in peace. Later that night, I came home alone as I was tired from the move. I decided to let my friends carry on partying without me. I arrived at my door and proceeded to fumble around for my keys, when I looked up to see a man standing on the walkway in front of the new apartment smoking a cigarette. He was tall and thin with brown, oily hair. I noticed that he also had a cut lip and a faded but still visible black eye. I said, Good day, sir. Sorry about the noise earlier. Correctly assuming that he was my neighbour. He replied, Nah, you're alright mate, I'm Chris. And he shook my hand. I noticed his knuckles were red and a little bit scratched up, so I knew something was off. I apologised for the noise and said, I hope I didn't cause any trouble for you. He withdrew his hand and with a soft but cracking voice said, Nah, that's okay. Rick just gets a bit cranky sometimes. I'm used to it. With that, I finished off the conversation and told Chris that I'd see him later. It was about 2am at this point and I just wanted to sleep, but couldn't help worrying about the potential domestic abuse going on next door. I decided to just keep an eye on it for now, so I didn't have all the info. For all I knew, he could have gotten into a fight with someone else. As the weeks passed, I noticed that my new neighbours got drunk regularly and would argue almost every time. I could tell that Rick was the dominant one, as his voice was a lot deeper and Chris seemed to be afraid of him during their shouting matches. This is why I kept my distance, I never really socialised with them. I would even overhear them arguing about me and that Rick thought that Chris liked me. I would just tune all of this out with headphones and video games, not to mention an active social life and full-time work to keep me occupied. I did find myself avoiding having guests over because of the neighbours. I would opt to meet people out, as their arguments could be quite upsetting. This was working out fine enough for a while, until Christmas Eve that same year. I was arriving home after having come from last minute Christmas shopping. I was getting ready for a night of present wrapping as I was to visit my family the following day for Christmas. As I arrived home, I noticed two police cars outside and Anna, an Asian woman who lived a few apartments up from Chris was screaming. 
I asked her what was happening, and all she said was, It's just so sad, while sobbing. I could see three officers trying to restrain somebody, and there was blood on their uniforms. I came just a little bit closer to see Chris's oily brown hair in the centre of the affray. His face was bleeding from his jaw, where he had apparently been slashed by something sharp. They got him to his feet, and I could see that his cheek had been cut so deep that the skin was flapping open as he struggled and resisted with the police. I recoiled in shock and went to comfort Anna, who was crying uncontrollably at this point. Suddenly, Rick's voice boomed out from nowhere. You see what you've done? You fucking loser. Just kill yourself. This frightened me, and my instinct was to get myself and Anna to safety. And even though the cops were here, they had their hands full with Chris, and I certainly didn't want to get involved in such an ugly fight where knives were involved. Anna refused to come with me and said that she would be fine. I looked around to see where Rick was as he kept yelling at Chris the whole time, with the three cops struggling to restrain him. I could also hear Chris whimpering apologetically in between. I couldn't see where Rick was, so I decided to just go to my apartment and lock the door. As I turned to go, I froze in horror as Rick's voice boomed. Where the fuck are you going? A deep chill went down my spine as my brain struggled to reconcile the fact that these words were coming out of Chris's mouth. I felt panic grip me as I realised that all this time, Rick and Chris were the same person. All of the fighting, laughing, drinking and crying that I couldn't even help overhearing over the last couple of months had come from one solitary person. A lonely man in his small one-bedroom apartment. For some reason, this made me feel sick. I learnt later from Anna that this wasn't the first time the police had to come out to take Chris away. Anna explained that he spends a couple of months at the local psychiatric hospital each time. His father owns the apartment, so it's here waiting for him when he gets out. I moved out a few months later, and while it's a sad situation for Chris, and I really do feel for him, I just hope that I never see him again. Number 2 So, this story starts about two months ago at my apartment complex. My fiancé and I were sitting on our balcony at around 2am when we began to hear this strange metallic clanking sound. We both got up to look and saw a woman walking down the street towards our building, wearing a fully face covering lizard mask and carrying a metal baseball bat. The noise that we heard was her nonchalantly tapping the bat off of the concrete as she walked towards us. For background, our apartment complex is on the top of a hill in the middle of the woods, so there is no reason anyone other than our neighbours would be in the area. My fiancé and I are obviously a little freaked out at this point, so we hid on our balcony and watched as she walked into our building and out of sight. We assumed she was just one of our neighbours coming from a really weird party after drinking too much and laughed it off. Until last night. Last night, as we were sitting on our balcony, our neighbour came out and asked, Was that you last night? After convincing him that we had no idea what the hell he was talking about, he told us what had happened to him the night before. Apparently, he had gotten back to our building at around 2am and taken the elevator up, rather than walk up to the 5th floor where we all live. When the elevator reached our floor and the doors opened, the same girl in the lizard mask was standing there holding the bat. When he put his hand up and asked her if she was okay, she didn't respond to him, didn't flinch, move out of his way, 
nothing. She just stood there, like she was in a trance, in his own words. She then pushed past him onto the elevator and stood there facing him until the doors shut. After getting to his apartment and making sure that his wife and baby hadn't been killed by a bat-wielding psycho, he went out into his balcony and there she was, standing in the parking lot. He watched her walk down the street towards the leasing office, about 300 yards, turn around and walk back towards our building, taking an especially long route and passing right under our balconies. She then walked into our building, and we haven't seen her since. Hopefully it stays that way. Number 3 Let me start by saying that at the time this began, about three months ago, my wife and I along with our three children had been living in this apartment for about three months. We are very quiet people, just a lesbian couple with some kiddos, and because we live in the Bible Belt, people tend to give us sort of a wide berth. Both my wife and I also tend to give off a do not fuck with us vibe due to past experiences. Most of the time, people don't. So, we've been living in a nice townhouse apartment in a nice quiet area of our city, which itself is smallish, minding our own business and going about our lives. I usually go home at about 7 to 8 pm at this point, and my wife and I would spend time together with our two youngest kids who are teenagers, until their 9.30pm bedtime. At about 10.30pm, my wife would leave the apartment to go and get our oldest son from work, and I would settle in for bed myself, as I gotta get up early for work the next day. This had been our routine for about three months, and we were all pretty settled into it. So, one evening, I'm laying there in bed, checking my emails as I tried to wind down enough to go to sleep. The light in my second floor bedroom, which is visible from the street in front of our building, is off. And directly below me, and right next to our front door, is our first floor bathroom, where the light is off. And the kids are asleep, and the dogs, two of them, are snoozing at the foot of my bed, and I'm quickly approaching sleep myself. The house is quiet and clearly closed up for the night. My car is in our spot right in the front, also locked up. Somewhat distractedly, I hear a loud, broken sounding car pull up into our parking lot. But I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I know what my wife's car sounds like, and this isn't it. I figure it's one of our neighbours or their guests. A few minutes later, I heard the tapping. It was a very distinct sound. The sound of fingernails tapping against glass. Immediately I felt a chill go up my spine. It's the middle of the night. Why would someone be tapping on a window at this time? I laid quiet for a moment, waiting for someone to look out their door and go. Dude, wrong house! Or something along those lines. I was waiting for this to happen, but that didn't happen. Instead, the tapping continued. It would go on for a few minutes, stop for a minute or two, and resume. It was directly below my bedroom, and I could hear it very clearly. Someone was tapping on our bathroom window. Here is where I was stupid. I would love to say that I called the cops and some creeper was arrested. But that isn't what happened. Instead, I texted my wife. And it went something like, Please tell me you got back early and you're tapping on the window because you suck at jokes. She texted back immediately with something along the lines of, Uh, no, I'm on my way now. At this point, I'm seriously creeped out. I flipped on the bedroom light, hoping that it would scare the tapper off. But no dice. The tapping continued. Finally, I slipped out of bed, grabbed a baseball bat from our closet, and crept down the stairs. Again, I don't know why I didn't call the cops, 
I remember being worried about scaring the kids or overreacting. I didn't want one of the city cops that I work with laughing at me because there was a squirrel at my window or something. So I was handling this myself. The downstairs and it's still completely dark, silent except for the tapping. And I was careful not to make any noise. I slipped right up to the front door and very quietly turned the deadbolt. It was unlocked previously because I knew my wife would be coming back and didn't want to inconvenience her. After this, I peeped through our blinds. Nothing. No one was on the porch. Confused and still freaked out, I went back downstairs. As soon as I turned out the light, the tapping started again. This time, I flipped a light. I turned the light back on and called my wife. Sort of panicked, still listening to this steady tapping from the window downstairs. She has a cooler head than I do, and told me that she was hanging up to call the police. For the 20 minutes or so that it took her to get home, I was huddled in the bed, clutching my dachshund. Useless beast that she is, clearly, and listening to this tapping. It stopped five or six minutes before she arrived, and I heard the sound of that very loud, broken, sounding car again. The police arrived a minute or so after my wife and took a report. The cop, who I knew, chastened me thoroughly for not calling them first, right when it started. My wife did the same. They definitely didn't think I was overreacting, and there was evidence that someone had been there. The dirt in our front garden was disturbed, some plants were crushed, and the bench that usually sits in our front of our window had been moved out of the way from the front of the house. I was embarrassed but relieved. The cops said they would make sure that there was a patrol in the area to keep an eye on things. For the next several nights, there was a police car rolling down my street right about the time my wife left to pick up our son, and then coming back at about a 15 minute interval from there on out. Problem solved, right? Not so much. After about three weeks, I figured the problem was resolved. There had been no more instances of window tapping or any other creepy activity around the apartment. It seemed like it had just been a weird, distressing prank, and that whoever it was, was over it. We were still making sure that we were cautious, keeping our deadbolt locked, walking the dogs at night together instead of alone, checking to make sure the cars were locked. But there was no reason to continue to really worry about it. So, that night, about three weeks later, I was working late, and I had a lot of paperwork to do, and I just wanted to knock it out. So, at about 9pm, I was still there, and everyone else in my building was gone, and had been gone for more than an hour now. It was just me. That was totally fine by me. I had locked myself in, set the security alarm, and turned off the unnecessary lights in the office. I wasn't worried, as I had done this many times before with no problems. I felt completely safe, and I was also about 40 minutes from home. That was the length of my daily commute at the time. I'm not sure what time it was exactly, somewhere between 9pm and 10pm. I'm hanging out in my office, tapping away on my computer, my back to the floor-to-ceiling windows behind me. They don't open and have blinds as well as curtains, but you can see the windows themselves from our front parking lot. At that point, I hardly noticed the windows. I had decorated them when I set up the office, put down the blinds, and promptly forgot about them. At least until I heard the tapping. It was the same sound, fingernails against glass, and this time it was directly behind me. Needless to say, I flipped a little. I almost turned over my desk chair, getting out of the office, and called the police from one of the interior offices with no windows. The entire time I'm waiting, which is about 10 minutes, I'm hearing this tapping. It wasn't in just one area, but moved around the windows on the front of our building, and it echoed in the empty halls, and was genuinely creepy as fuck. When the police arrived, they told me it was okay to come out and I met them at the front door, which was still locked. 
and the security system still alarmed. They checked the perimeter of the building, the back door, and the other offices, but there was no one there, and just disturbed plants and dirt in the garden that runs along our building's front, and smudges on the glass. They waited while I locked back up, walked me to my car, and then followed me out of the parking lot and until I hit the interstate. After that, everything seemed to stop. There have been no more instances of window tapping, either at home or at my office. And last week, for unrelated reasons, we moved to a new house much closer to my work and in another city entirely. I've gone back to sometimes working late, but I also asked for my office to be moved to the back of the building, on the second floor, where my windows aren't accessible at all. So far, everything is quiet and I'm hoping it stays that way. Window tapper, you creepy fuck. Whoever you are, I hope we never meet. <laughs>